Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Books and Betches. Not to be confused with books and... Bogna, I'd like to make a deal. Oh, I didn't know where you're going with that. Okay, me neither. I'm Kristen, and with me I have... <laughs> the Bogna! <laughs> and Maria. That's Erica. <laughs> the Bogna! <laughs> Not the Bargainer. Okay, did you practice that one? Is that what happened? No. I, just, I feel like I just, you came into that one with it. No, I mean, I remembered that that was like the phrase for the book. It actually sounded like you were saying Bogna, and I didn't know what that meant. The Bogna! <laughs> he's from boston <laughs> okay well this is a book podcast we swear we spoil and we talk about sex i think we're gonna do all those things in this one right yeah right yeah sex sure. is sex in there yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i must this have, is a smuttier book than must have blacked sorry it out. spicier book i don't know everyone's <laughs> little rating skill is for a spice and mine seems to be the triggering one so i can't remember i they there's sex there is yes. sex. Yeah. Multiple. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay. Um, the book that we're talking about today is part of the Bargainer series. This is book one, Rhapsodic by Bargainer. Laura Thalassa. Say it again. Laura Thalassa. Sorry. Somebody was screaming in the background. I think it was a child that the ran by. <laughs> oh, there it is again. Um, yeah. The Bargainer. Why are we having such a hard time with this title? I don't know. <laughs> Rhapsodic. I, like, are you sure? I think Rhapsodic in general is the title of the book. What does it mean? Rhapsody? Like Yeah, I don't music? know what it means to the book. I know what Rhapsody means, but what's Rhapsodic? And why would the like book be called that? Rhapsodic version of Rhapsodic. <laughs> no, that <laughs> can't be right. I'm, going, yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. Talking to the microphone, Erica. <laughs> they can't be. Gonna. What does this book have to do with music? Oh, she's a siren. Yeah, she's a siren. So it's like a the oh, thing. Like a rhapsody. Like, like, okay. Yeah, rhapsody. Extravagantly emotional. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> I was following though, it's following your lead. Extremely emotional. Of a rhapsody. Blindly, What's rhapsody though? Oh yeah, gonna, you're right. Rhapsody is music. Find rhapsody. I don't know the real. I meaning. think rhapsody is great rapture. <laughs> Delight. Ecstatic. What are we thinking of? Rapture a portion of an epic poem adapted for recitation. Oh, oh okay, yeah, yeah. So rap. Oh. Right. Rap oh. Is that where rap comes from? Maybe. We are making revolutions that <laughs> definitely are not rooted in factual evidence. Arcade, Please don't a miscellaneous from. collection. Oh. A highly emotional utterance. A highly emotional literary work. Eff effusively? That sounds like a rap to Rapturous me. Rapturous or extravagant discourse. Sounds like rap slam ecstasy. poetry. A musical composition of a regular form having hey, a there it is. There character. Go. There it is. We had to dig, but we found music. There we go. Okay. We did research. <laughs> right here, live. Right here. <laughs> live. It happens sometimes. Live Not the tape. <laughs> Not often at all. So this is a series. How many books are in the series? I don't know. Because like I'll say that there's many books and then I find out there's <laughs> So there's, there's three main books in this series. There is a companion novel... Should we address that? Yeah. Could we have to? Uh, the Ender's, it happened Ender's so long Game. ago Ender's now. Yeah. By the time this comes out, Ender's Game. It's a dead horse. I, and we're I had it. looked online. I thought it was only two books, <laughs> right? Because like I, and mind you, I didn't really care too much for the book. So I wasn't going to keep looking for more books. So I had said, yeah, it stops at two. Now we're getting I agreed with you. Of like, this is a um, big oversight on our part. Okay. Yeah, like, um, there's definitely 16 plus. So there's like, 20. What? He's I working like, on. What do you mean twenty? The twentieth like, comes out this year. Or he's still did. going. Yeah, the, I was like, did not even know. I'll say we it didn't here. know. Big oversight on our part, but we we did a quick Goog. <laughs> <laughs> we did a quick Goog, and it didn't didn't pay off. <laughs> it didn't pay out. We also just didn't want to Google him anymore because yes. he kept making us more upset. Exactly. <laughs> okay. You know what? <laughs> You know what? You know all, what? All of his articles, I was so we were so enshrouded by all of the Shroud. fucking racist yes. propaganda You're that right. he spews You're all right. of the right. The, I didn't yeah. even find so, a book. Yeah. We couldn't find all of his books because it was too much hate speech coming up on well, all the search results. To be fair, when I went home, I just opened the Wikipedia page. Okay. And they were all okay. laid out. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Please. Moving on. How many books are in this series, Erica? There's you know. There's three main books for this series. B allegedly. It is a trillogy. <laughs> there, <laughs> there is not a legend. <laughs> the fourth book in this series is a companion novel to the first book. Okay. So it is the... Says Erica. It is. She's read all of them. So oh, good, good. it is the male perspective and it gives like background oh, on yeah, Des it, yeah. and then it moves forward. It's from the his Midnight Sun we actually want. Yes. Ah, yes. That's a Twilight reference. Yeah. I'm here. I got you it. got it. I did. Well, I remember that. It is worth reading if you liked Rhapsodic. Let's talk about this. I gave this book five stars. Did you? I fucking love this book. Yeah. I That's did. That's banana land to me. What did, what did you give it? 
I don't even I don't even know if I gave it five stars. Oh, no. When was the last time you were? You, you didn't did. did. It's right there. No, that's the third book. No, that's the third book. Um. I like the third book the best. Oh, I will continue reading them. That's for oh, sure. Oh no, I gave, gave the first. all of them five stars. Love, I see it right here over <laughs> your shoulder. You Wait. you dish out those five stars real quick. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's what I only. Oh, it's only rated four stars. I give it all five stars. Yes, yes, I've given this series all five stars across the board. You. I was it was close to five for me. Oh, but the Harry Potter ruined it. Ah, uh, we'll talk. about I was it. talking to Kate about this. I, was, I I read this back in February. So if I get things wrong, sorry, I read it like a week ago. And I'll probably still gonna get, get things wrong. wrong. <laughs> um, but as I was reading this, like this might be the first five star of the year. Ooh, like, I was that into the book. Wow, <laughs> and then it didn't happen. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? I, like gonna I just told her. Up. I just told her about the girls in London. <laughs> it was just so oh, the oh. girl in London. Should we yeah. tell that story, or is that sure. too mean? I don't know. I mean, oh. it's like mean to own Americans. It's not like we're like right, right. bashing. Okay, the no. Everybody makes fun of different accents across America. Yeah, yeah. And we do it playfully. It's not like yeah. Well, this one. <laughs> so we went to London, and the whole time I'm bashing London, like just as a joke to Kate, literally to make Kate mad. It's and I'm so just like, you know, bad. America's Love got you, America's got 180 points, and British is like 30 or something. And I kept like going down from there. I was like, oh, that's minus points. They drive on the wrong side of the road. So I was fucking with her, right? And uh, being the troll that Kristen is. Yeah. And yes, like, of course, making it. fun of the. I was like, oh, it's Tuesday in it. It's Tuesday in it. And they say in it a lot. That's not, that's a we, fucking We met real... a guy who kept saying in it. And then Kristen would be like, in it. And then he would get upset. <laughs> so we're walking down the street. In it. And there's this American woman with her British boyfriend. Yeah. And she's about to cross the street and literally into oncoming traffic. And he grabbed her to hold her back from fucking dying. And she goes, I know what I'm doing. You act like I didn't live here for like two yes. years. And she said it just like, I swear to God, just like that. I swear just to God. Straight up Cali. It was like a shit. fucking, I, I stopped dead in my crap. It's Valley yeah. Girl. It's Valley Girl. And, and she had her little girl. like. British beret, beret with on. big ass like um flowy <laughs> pants you know with oversized jacket trying Maybe to she... be the most trendy <laughs> shit listen if you're out there and you're a fan stop <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she goes my favorite one you say it, you do the best oh um <laughs> Can I have some of your lager? Your lager. Can and I then have some of your lager. We're going to have a good ass time. A good ass time. <laughs> so we heard it. And then me and Maria were making these. We were doing this. We were doing this doing exact same thing. And Kate was dying. She thought it was so funny. She was like, she, this that's is- what we do here as like a, a what we think Americans sound like. We're yeah, like, that's absolutely. Not- so I just want to say we don't fucking all sound like that. OK, thank you. Yeah, but Valley Girl uh no but i'm saying like we do make we do make fun of accents yeah 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 Yeah, for sure how did we get there i don't even know where did i leave because she the way she said (laughs) oh right 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 right. when i said my thing she's like oh wow yeah i thought she was being mean to me but then turned into like got it story sometimes i forget how we get places um we go on tangents so much so five star read for me loved this book so fucking much uh how did did you like des i love des love des like isn't he like a great little like, I think that's anti-hero yeah. kind of yeah. like yeah. he's a bad boy but yeah. he's also a good boy but, I will say I, bad. when I when I finished this book I saw a lot of people that didn't like this book rate it as like a shitty wannabe a guitar I what? don't, so. I I don't get that think at all. It, it I didn't get it at all. Not They're even like, a little. I think just because Reese is some kind of like a, you know, morally gray. Dude, if I had to pick dude, this over Aquatar feels like a child's book compared to like the, in my opinion. Uh, like the plot line is not even nothing comparable. Up, I'm, I'm no. just saying what the what the winter. So I don't weird. think that I don't think in compare. If you compared Reese and and Des, Des is is truly morally gray. Like he's a bad yeah, guy. Yeah, it was good for the most part. It like he's an great- underworld king type dude. Yeah, he's got like his good like roots. Like he doesn't like try to be like that bad, but mm. he like kills people. Right, mm-hmm. and like. So there's a part in the companion book where, like, you know how she confesses that that somebody, like, well, no. So, you know, when, like, she confesses that, like, a teacher, like, touched her or whatever. He rips this guy to shreds. That's awesome. Like, and it's, and it's detailed in there. You know know what what I mean? Like, he is is not, he's not Reese. He's in any capacity. This is the perfect book to do that type of book to because there are so many parts of his that are missing because he goes to a different fucking world. That's why with like Edward from Twilight, it's like, you're seeing everything already. Like you already know. And her perspective on this is she doesn't even know how he feels about her. Exactly. Exactly. And she thinks that he just like left her for seven years. Right. And this is, to me, this is the miscommunication trope that works yeah right? let's this do is a miscommunication let's do that 60 works. seconds so we can dive into it because i i love this if you're new to this podcast you're doing we it. do this i'm doing it yeah you're the one that's most recently oh yeah yeah, yeah okay okay well yeah, if I'll you're take, I'll do, take the, the phone do you want me to say the thing i gotta say the thing no you what say, if people are you new say to the thing yeah i'm gonna stop watching okay if you're new to this you podcast okay 
if you're new to this podcast where we attempt to do this thing where we explain the entire plot summary of a book in 60 seconds or less, I guess I'm doing it this week because I read this the most recently and now I need to... Th- and, and you love it everything's so escaped much. me. Okay, here we go. Three, <laughs> two... Callie is a siren. She um, can tell when... Or she... Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> she can tell when people are lying she's got her own business where she like you know tries to manipulate people and do things whatever so in the beginning of the book she makes a deal with the bargainer the bargainer bad guy he comes in and he's like what do you need me to do and she's like i need you to kill my or i killed my dad i need you to help me get rid of the body because her dad bad guy um this was when she was 16 we flash forward to the future 30 seconds she's got her own business she's an alcoholic she's dating alcoholic. she's da- she is she's dating a werewolf um and then the bargainer comes back to collect his debts because she's made so many of them and he's Boy. like she got this little bead thing and he's like all right i need all my debts collected you're gonna do these things for me they go on this epic quest where um in his kingdom women are going missing Ten. and they're coming back with these creepy ass fucking children they need to figure out why when they figure out why it's a really bad guy they gotta kill him they kill him in the end and then she gets wings two one (laughs) honestly not bad it was really hard i know there's a lot going on i I didn't realize i didn't realize how much it's a lot yeah it's a lot okay you did great good job thank you so much that was really good i feel like i missed everything but thank you i appreciate that you did me i did really like the book good yeah no one asked if you didn't (laughs) 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 i just feel like that's why i did okay like sometimes if it sucks i'm like disconnected you know what i'm saying um this book started i love the beginning of it it started with just fucking murder right like she's covered in blood she's like we just jump in and i'm like oh shit what the fuck happened why is she covered in blood turns out she killed her dad her stepdad 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 Stepdad. Stepdad. sorry um we don't know why he why she did it in the beginning we find that out later yeah um so after she kills her stepdad she's like shit um he was also touching her yes yeah yeah so there's it's an urban fantasy so there is this like underworld area of things which i loved the i the did not lines. know this I was an that. urban fantasy oh. i thought this was just straight up fantasy so when we come mm. in again another one of those inter- instances i where fucking hate urban fantasies and i love this one the rest of the series is not in the real world though. oh cool it's all in the underworld yeah. well it, going in again it's it's one of those things where i did not know about the book as all, all i knew was that erica loved it Oh, I didn't even that know Des that. was great. <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. And that everyone just loved this book. So okay. I said, okay, I won't know anything else. Yeah. I'll go in. And when I come into this with like, there's phones still and she's like in the real world. I was like, wait. Yeah. What? <laughs> 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 it threw me off, but I was okay with it. So yeah. I, I had so there, much fun reading this I, book. There's nothing that I like more than picturing Des in like a Metallica band. He yeah, did. I love his mm-hmm. and his leather jacket. I do wish he didn't like, have long hair, though. I'm not a long hair fan. Well, let's talk about how he Wait, gets have there. Have you seen any of the fan art? No, there's not a I lot don't of know. fan art for it, and really? it makes me want to cry. Why I will not? say that our entire explorer page now on instagram of our instagram page is just fan art because of erica <laughs> so i don't find actual like erica, new what books the fuck? i don't find new books at all <laughs> to like um find on instagram it's just fan art i'm not surprised bad. and babies and probably some weird ass fan art too yeah <laughs> not the best no offense to everybody so else. um Wait, this is my favorite fan yes art. that's the one you showed me i like that one Ooh! So that's what we took put But I it. think he's—that's the hottest he looks. Yeah, because it's like it's—it's yeah. it's the man bun, but not too excessive a man bun. I don't mind yeah. it. He's so. Send me that's why I can um put it on the in the video. So he so okay. She killed her dad. She's got to clean it up. And this is back when she was sixteen. So mm-hmm. this is like seven years ago. She is was, what it says. No, she was like a week from turning sixteen. Yeah. So she's a baby. Um, and she knows that there's uh, he's her stepdad is like pretty high up in this other world so she knows the consequences of killing him is mm-hmm. going to be massive so she does gives you like mafia boss she vibes. does she's a, she's up against the wall so what she does is she calls the bargainer and like that was how that chapter ends. she was like summon the bargainer and i was like oh shit this is fucking cool mm-hmm. i love like a sandman vibe yeah, like yeah. i'm really into those types of books where it's like that one person a mystical is, like, being that yeah, you have nothing yeah i fucking love that so the bargainer shows up um and then we kind of flash forward into the future. And that's the whole book. We go back seven years. Then we go back to the Did future. Did you like that? I usually hate it. And I think it worked very it well. It's done very well. Because the way that the um, story told itself was like the past picked up the pieces of the present. So that's, yeah. that's, I think we're, yeah. it, it reminded me of a show. Because yeah. when you see like those flashback scenes in a show, yep. it's usually to give you the Easter eggs that's going to relate yes. to present time. To me, it was so short 
Mm-hmm. Both all the chapters, yeah, that, that it too. went really quick. It yeah. Really, like, yeah, you weren't getting these long, elaborate chapters of like a monotonous, like shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You're getting these little snippets of mm-hmm. moments between them that's building Yo. their relationship as their relationship is progressing, and then the timeline where like you finally get to the moment where they get broken apart, yeah, and that like she wishes you for figure this, out like, curse. Yeah. yeah, the whole and book you're waiting as, to find out what was that yeah, separated yeah. them for seven years, yeah. and then you you find that out as she finds out yes. what actually happened yes. I thought the timeline of this book was, was beautifully so well paced in yeah. terms of that I agree with like how that story unfolded and the the next you know obviously the next two books are not told in this format right it's all present so tense it's just which is know, crazy because for, for this book I don't think the book would have worked if it was just present tense I don't think I think it would have been a lot harder to craft to tell that this timeline. story yeah I agree mm-hmm. so I thought it was master masterfully done um which is crazy because I don't like these things. Um, so very surprising. Book. It just shows that like when you have good writing in terms of that, that that is how it, yeah. how you can utilize di- like again, that miscommunication trope. Yeah. Like I don't think it's miscommunication. People don't like, I think it's when people, the way it's, when it's, yes. when it's not done properly. Yeah. Yes. I agree. And I think people blanket it because miscommunication is a very easy trope to do poorly. Yes. yes. And for it to be very yes. hingent upon an entire plot line. Mm-hmm. Right. If, if, if she knew why the bargainer like left her i don't think the plot falls apart right Maybe it changes it but doesn't mm-hmm. fall apart right mm-hmm. i agree so when she um calls so when we fast forward she has her own business right and do you guys remember what like this She's business a private, is? Investigator. She's a private, private investigator okay yeah so she but she has this like ring of beads around her wrist i imagine to be like a big like winding oh wow bracelet that's thing. a good point i didn't think about it because there are so many beads arm. yeah like oh that. let me see let me see Oh, that's not, I was picturing just one bracelet. No, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, there's so many beads. Why did I picture that? <laughs> like a heavy ass fucking. Well, I would imagine if you want to just do the regular bracelet, it's yeah. a magical one where you, when you pop one. Right. Another one. Another one yeah. Okay. But th- I thought the big one that's just like. Wrapped I like that her better. It was like super cool. I like that better. So she's got this like a bunch of beads and essentially they all represent every single debt that she owes to the bargainer. But so she used to like as a, as a kid, 16, 17 year old or 16 year old, she would just call him to like hang, hang out, out. <laughs> which I that was so cute. Like, and <laughs> so cute. To hang really out with cute. him, he would charge her a bead, but he would he knew she was her his mate. And I think that this is also like a little sticky because obviously he's like three hundred years old yeah. and he's sixteen. But I think it was done tastefully. Listen, he wouldn't touch her. There was not sexual. There was no, no. sexual tension. He, he said no, it was, like, I don't fuck yeah. with kids. He said it yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And, and he I, was truly there as a friend. I he think. felt bad for her. And he was he like was a protector because she's been through so much fucking trauma yeah. throughout all of her life, like with, with the teacher, with the, her stepdad. So like as we and yeah, she's got a like a, a boyfriend now moving into like this real world. So my thing was just like, OK, how is this going to come back together? Right. And eventually the bargainer comes back. He's like the most wanted man in that and realm. He does, it's not give doesn't give no, he doesn't give a fuck at all, which I love. Let's talk about Des. Des is who is the bargainer. He is sexy as fuck. Blonde hair. Um, like white hair. White. Wh- white, white hair. I just pictured like the hottest fucking dude in my yeah. mind. Like, yeah, just and, hot, badass yes. combat boots. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Who would you cast? Ooh, that's tough, man. I would have to think about that for a I while. Think it, so think about it while you're talking about it because I want to I want to see what we, what I, we I, like. I want I'm this, so this bad. person's fan art. Yeah, I'm so bad at the You casting. guys would hate what just came to my mind. Don't say Henry Cavill. Because I hate it too. Oh no, it's somebody who's not even hot. Who? He's hot, but he's not. Who? Tom Felton. <laughs> Draco <Tom>. Malfoy. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. That's why absolutely you, not. Him now, though? No. I, th- it, I think he's no. hot. I think he's hot. No, he's not. You got to add more. He's not. He's not. If he was bigger. No. It's, I don't like just, it. No. It's just the first thing that came I to my mind, like but I don't I even don't agree like with it. it. No. I don't like it. <laughs> fair um no i don't know i don't know who i picture i'd have to i honestly it. i thought orlando bloom oh that's a good one with bo- yes he has that kind of like dark broody vibe he can yeah. do it i like that i like what about that. what about callie? like a, yeah, a young orlando bloom. i like that what about callie uh callie, callie to me was like i think it could be like lucy hale somebody Ooh, like somebody I like that about lucy hale i think lucy you know what i mean like somebody give me that like, badassery thing yeah that's where i'm like stuck on lucy hale's too too pretty girl next door i'd have to really um, think about that too i mm. think she'd be fine what, mm-hmm. what about the girl from the originals not the originals um like vampire diaries like a z Legacies. what color hair does she have brown brown hair yeah i don't know i'd have to think about that um so when he shows up in the future he's like i'm ready to collect my debts 
but he's been gone for seven years and obviously they like had a thing um and she's just like why did you leave me and the whole thing is like why did he leave her right like why was he gone for seven years he's clearly in love with her he shows up to collect his debts immediately fucking like makes out with her and you're like "Ooh, there is sexual tension here tension's insane and you do pick up the pieces by going back seven years and like learning that they were slowly becoming this like unit together and like she relied on him and i think partly he relied on her too even though he wouldn't admit it but like he was definitely falling for her big time throughout the whole book seven years ago yeah um and, and not in like a i think she did it well with not making it creepy i agree it wasn't creepy i at totally all to totally agree with that and he was super respectful like we said and then um basically all this is leading up to the there's these women in his kingdom they're, they're warriors and they're going missing and then some of them are coming back but in a completely pregnant. like comatose comatose state but they have children with them they're not even pregnant they have the kid with them i thought there some of them were pregnant are they and i thought they, they were coming. The, the babies are just born and oh, then they have might to be stay right. with yeah. these moms and like latching on yes and be sucking so the out. kids that they're having are like so fucked up creepy creepy kids this book like at one point i was like is this a fucking horror there was a it part felt, where she went it she, felt like that he like des was like all right we um you know we gotta ask this person questions they asked like the midwife not the midwife the woman who was taking care of the babies right mm -hmm. she was noticed she had bruises all over her body because the babies suck on them like and, the fucking vampires yeah and since she's a siren she's able to get like the truth out of her and that's why des is using her and like uh, it, i thought it was really neat that if she didn't like fall to his magic it would hurt her and i was like that's a really cool way of doing magic like he had a magic over her so that she had to do the thing to get rid of the debt mm -hmm. um i thought that was a really neat way to like just show magic but so she got out of this um woman she basically admitted that all the babies are latching onto her and every time they bite her she has a vision and i was like what the fuck is this shit so when des and callie go down to see the babies callie's like i want to see these kids this shit was creepy as fuck it was so creepy. i was the listening whole, yeah this. the whole thing so is a very creepy was i listening or did i read no i read this yeah i read it reading it i was freaked out it oh was my creepy. callie God. comes into this room it's all these babies it was they're all silent they don't gone. speak yeah and all of a sudden when she comes down to see these kids they all start whispering to her yep and it's the creepiest thing. Like, he's coming for you. He wants you to be with him. Da, da, da. And by he, they mean, uh, what's this guy's name? The bad guy of our Vernon? book? Vernon? No. Vernon? Uh, That's his name. But like, what's his like... Um, uh, the Thief of Souls or thief something? Thief of Souls. Something oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. So he's... This, there's this big bad going around stealing the souls of these women all to get at the bargainer, essentially. Yeah. It was literally all just to get to him. And so these kids are like his little minions... And they're talking to her, to Callie. And obviously, he's going to use Callie as a little, like, um, as a hostage. At some I got, point. Yeah. I got one little spot in here that I could read that's a little say creepy. It. Say, say so it. it's like, almost as one, the children at the window begin to toward, turn toward us. I go cold all over at the sight. Their eyes move to Des. All at once, they begin to scream not moving just screaming uh, even the babies are wailing so it's like I this moment it. where like like it. like just picture like a bunch of kids bunch of kids like slowly turning and just, ah! like <laughs> fuck off so yeah that was really uh, man that shit got me kids good. are creepy kids, kids like, are creepy, creepy and kids horror are films, creepy horror books anyway this whole like little plot i thought was very neat as well i was super invested i was like why the fuck are these people coming back pregnant and like what are these kids have to do with anything but the yeah the thief of souls i thought that was cool because he's like in the nightmares right and like in the dark which was really neat i think trilogies that have like a big bad that may remain consistent throughout three books is really is it does it come back for book two because he's yeah, killed but book yeah he's got to come back there's right? three different stories right like oh. there are three different like situations but it's still that still like big bad you don't one. really know who he is or what yeah. he is or how i liked he came him from he was psychotic he was yeah, like, you don't yeah. know. he was like a, a true representation of like, you don't know what you're going to get that day. Right. So he kept like, bring, when he kidnapped her, he kept bringing her in and every day was something different. He was really interesting. I liked him. He was supposed to be like this, uh, like when she first met him, um, the Thief of Souls, he's like this god, essentially. It looks like he's got like fucking like antlers. Like, yeah, stuff. antlers, like looks really, really creepy. And then he started talking and the whole time, I, all I could picture was like this little gremlin and i was like i fucking i want to like kick this kid like i just wanted to like kick him something he about gave him me so when he was described with the antlers i thought of one of the hallucinations that um will graham has in hannibal yeah you remember season one you saw it yeah but he would see that thing that yes. black figure with the big exactly antlers. what i was picturing that's what i was picturing same same 
How did you feel about like the shadows? I think the shadows are such a cool like. That was shadows. really neat that Remind he. Me. So like like he, the bargainer has yeah. sha- like he talks to the shadows. Oh yeah. yeah, it gave me Asriel vibes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I guess so. Like, like a little bit. Basically, what I happens, think they have a little bit more personality. Yeah, yeah. Like they, the shadows actually kind of like are mm-hmm. right sentient in a way. Yeah. So it like gives it they their character in, in a way. Right. Basically, what happens was like Kaylee gets kidnapped by or Callie gets kidnapped by that thief of souls. Like so, he completed his mission of getting her. Um, and she's locked up for a I don't a while. know a, a while yeah a like long weeks. time. And she's like talking to the woman in the cell next to her. And like they all know that she's a human, um, but the he starts like bringing her in and doing all these like weird fucking things to her and like breathing into her mouth and she's like becoming poisoned basically. Mm-hmm. When the bargainer finally shows up, which I don't even know how he ends up finding her. Um, uh, I think she calls him in a way. Oh yeah, it's, she kept saying like bargainer come, but that didn't work. But I then eventually she's like about to die. Basically, she knows she's gonna be impregnated by him because that's what happens. He he rapes he, them and, kills and them. then they have the baby. So she's like basically waiting for it at this point. And right before the bargainer shows up, he conducts like this magic and she starts having like a metamorphosis and all these things start happening and she's like bleeding everywhere and then all of a sudden like he gave her fucking wings and these scales go up her arms and like to her she's like i'm becoming a fucking monster yeah she thinks she's disgusting which like in reading it that's what i thought was happening she gets these talons and i'm like holy shit he's literally turning her into a fucking monster this is so cool like i was so into it Especially and then our main character it's not like some side person going through it. it's like our main yeah. person being altered drastically that was sick and then the bargainer shows up and it's like this it wasn't really much of a battle it was like two pages of them like facing off and the bargainer's just gathering magic gathering magic gathering magic the whole time she's like do something he's like hitting him and like the dude is like killing the bargainer but the bargainer's just sitting there gathering it all up and i thought that was a really fucking cool moment and then all of a sudden he like a snap of a finger or something and everything is just blood because he exploded the antler dude the, the thief of souls fucking crazy and i was like whoa holy shit okay saves her whatever the ending is her like waking up many weeks later yeah and she's like why am i so uncomfortable on my back oh yeah i have wings and i have a fucking scales she ends up looking the same physically well, like she her, has cool ass wings now but now she has cool wings i was like what a cool fucking thing on her arms yeah but she's not like like a but she monster also didn't see a mirror like she she it was yeah. just her perception of what she thought she was gonna look like right at the hands of this monster and that was the and end of the book, like right? look at yourself you look amazing yeah that was that was how it ended i think so okay yeah so now we can talk about just like all the minor things that i loved so much about this book um i love the i love that she has wings now it's getting me excited to get into the next book you're saying that it doesn't go back and forth anymore Mm-mm. okay i'm curious what just it's moving gonna... forward good i like that so the next book is like in uh it's kind of like a court like situation okay like they're mm. in a court and she does kinda... go and everyone essentially sees that she's going to be his queen yeah. yeah so then okay i guess so we it's miss... like court politics next book yeah and, and then I the like book politics. after that is it's like it's the accumulation of all of this stuff okay. got it i guess the um, most important part of this book was that um they're mates they're mated like he she's been his mate this whole time and the reason that he was gone for seven years was because he couldn't physically she see made her. some kind of wish yeah she made a wish she made what? a wish for him to always be hers yeah and, and that kind of magic like takes more mm-hmm. and she didn't realize that the wish was granted and he gets physically like removed from her and there's like a barrier that he can't cross that was a cool twist so I like he that. like in the companion book it shows him like trying to hit to like break through that barrier and he can't okay, well, and he uh, ends up buying I a house across the like across the he gaspied it yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah he gaspied it totally minus the green light and every single day he tries to fly to to Aww. her and he always like bounces off and then like there's scenes of him like drinking in a pub like looking at pictures of her and like <laughs> it's just like a very like s- like you kind of just really it's, feel for i this. will say i love their angst i think their angst was very it's believable so good. like a lot of books i feel like where they have this sort of like will they won't they or like there's some kind of anger because yeah. of a past issue most times it feels so um built up and not sustained yeah it's very much like i don't like you eh. but yep. then two pages later it's like i love you so much kiss right yeah like flock <laughs> <laughs> this one felt like she was actually mad at him right but it was because of the beads that like 
things were happening together. Sure. But she was still adamantly upset with him. Like, why'd you freaking leave me? Mm. I think it goes to show how you can have a bad guy, but not a toxic relationship. I think he's a true yeah. morally gray guy. Yeah, and I totally he, agree. And like, you might sit there and you would go like, well, why wouldn't he just tell her straight up? Like, I, yeah, you know, whatever. But it's like, because he's, he can't do that. He's mm-hmm. so like wrapped up in his own like, shit you yeah. know what i mean like he's just not that type of dude it like makes it sense, makes sense yeah. why that like maybe anybody else it wouldn't make sense but he because he's never so straightforward right he can't just like give secrets he can't that, just yeah. tell the truth because that's not in his and nature, not only that right? he, it shows his nature the entire time because she and asks then, yes, him for secrets all the time he won't tell he her anything will not tell them. and her siren abilities don't work on him this is yeah. something that i hit up maria with so when i first started the book i think it took me like maybe a couple chapters to like truly get into this because i was a little pissed that we open it and she's a siren and she's talking to this guy and trying to get answers out of him and she was like you know you're under my spell uh she was basically saying when somebody's under my spell all they could tell is the truth and then like 10 minutes later in this book she's like well where were you on this day and then he like says something and she goes oh yeah my ass and i was like oh you don't believe him even though he can only tell the truth under your spell so i was like i was already like angry about that and then i like started going down this like i spiraled yeah. and i messaged maria i was like well if you think about it like what if your lie is your truth? Like you mm-hmm. believe it so much that it's the truth to you. Exactly. That's and then the it's point. like, so then, but the whole siren thing becomes. Her power is not that you can tell her the truth. Right. Her power is that she can compel you to do whatever she wants. But it's so interesting when you think about that power in general, right? Yeah. Some people are like, I wish I could, you know, make it so somebody can only like truth serum. But mm-hmm. it's like, what is the truth in exactly. reality? Exactly. In, in, in life, even in politics and everything. We are all unreliable is, narrators. The truth is just yeah. what you believe. Your perception of, of the truth. I could give you all the facts. I could tell you that this is a Coke, right? Like this is soda. It's diet. Okay. This is a soda. And you could be like, no, it's not. I'll be like, what do you mean? No, it's, not, it's right is, there in front of you. This is what our lives are right now. This yeah. country's perception of anything right now is it's just, this. It's, it's a problem. It's a fascinating thing. And I just, I lost my mind over it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this I is good. I think uh, moving forward. So moving forward in this series, like she, her siren abilities are definitely very cool. Mm. Like how. So does she how, become fairy too though? Um, I think over time yeah i think like because she's like made it to him let's and she's not, like the queen do spoilers if we're gonna book, oh book yeah you're right, right. But, but like it, honestly now she got wings. oh oh I can yeah don't try. don't don't oh don't, yeah don't <laughs> it, there's a it's a whole subplot okay um but basically that's the whole next book essentially but basically like her siren abilities get really really cool as the book progresses yeah one thing that people some people's like complaint about this book is grammar and I what? did not notice. Or I didn't notice any. I, I didn't notice anything. No, like I mentioned in our talks about ratings, I don't. I'm not trying to. If I like dissect it enough, every unless sentence. it's so egregious where it's like missing quotation marks, missing periods, yeah. uncapitalized words that need to be like at the beginning. But even like, then, like, those like, sorts I, of things are things that I'm I noticed. able to yeah. put that aside if I like the story. Same. And then to me, readability, right? Like if I'm getting caught over words or, or like mistakes. phrases. Or like, you know what I mean? Where mm-hmm. it's like, it's stopping me. There was one that I didn't like is the, I would choose the latter. I think they, the author wrote that maybe four or five times in the mm. span of like a 30 or 40 pages. And I was like, oh my God, that why happens. do we keep I, saying I, I, I it? happens all lot. the time, but that was the only one that stood out to I me. I noticed that a lot. There were it didn't, certain it wasn't authors a, use the same phrasing yeah. for several t- And it wasn't times. enough to like take me completely. I mean, like I noticed it, but it wasn't enough. Like what I loved was how... Well, the writing, I love the writing, but I loved how sarcastic too, like some of the writing Mm. was like, there's a couple moments that I laughed out loud. Like when the kids were really, really fucking creepy and they were all screaming and crying, she goes, and then I began to sing twinkle, twinkle, little star. So sue me for not being invented, inventive. And I was like, I fucking love that. And then at the end, when she's seven years ago, I brought a fake king to my supernatural prom. Jesus. All I need is the monster mash playing in the background to round this out. And I was like, this is, this is great. Like little funny moments like that. that conversational yeah it felt like we were being brought into the story yes because like she's like and then i'm not that inventive i did went to a little sorry and yeah. then there's a moment that you hated the harry potter because she definitely said something where like they're watching the movie where Do- dobby dies yeah and she says but dobby was such a good friend yeah that's that's <laughs> all i can so think maria if they w- i literally read that and i said maria's gonna fucking hate this <laughs> just it's just saying we watched harry potter 
that's it yeah but like describing <laughs> the 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 scene that they're watching or whatever it throws me out i don't fucking care i was with you don't on that one because it feels self inserty. i agree it feels just it feels i like so out of place i like that me. moment though where he was like let's let you know let's, let's do cuddle. something that i've always wanted to do with you and then he like instead of like that's fine sex. you know he pulls <laughs> yeah. out the laptop and that's he's like we don't watch the seventh harry potter and yeah. it's like that's oh. funny that's perfect <laughs> that's, that's funny. perfect but then the dobby thing yeah it just it, was it, it, it has to be done a certain way for me not to get mad at it. I did think about you, though, Darian. I was like, ooh, Murray's going to hate this. It's just, it's, <laughs> I didn't like it either, if I'm being honest with it you. It just so. feels, I don't know, it feels, I don't know how to describe it, but it feels tacky to me. Yeah. yeah no, I, I get that. I do. I do. It doesn't, sometimes it bothers me a lot, sometimes it doesn't, so. I had a note in my notes that says very relatable, and I just clicked on it. I was like, what is it? And it says, you drooled all over my chest during the second movie. He confesses. To be honest, I thought you were crying again. Uh, I drool a lot, and all I could think of was, like, the amount of times I've just been laying on Mike's chest, and I, I looked down, I'm like, ooh, that's a lot of fucking drool. <laughs> He's not going to be thrilled. And then you'll just hear this, and he just dies laughing <laughs> every time. <sighs> But it like little moments like that were really cute. Well, they're well, very like authentic to a moment. relationship. Yeah, they're really no, but that's I have not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that relatability. It's so. just cute. It was cute. The, I think it has some authentic like relationship type. Yeah. Like, Quote it, no. it was just a solid book overall. I'm very happy with it. Yeah, I loved it. A surprise of the year for me. Um, I think. Well, and I, the, I think I think about. it was perfectly. The sex was perfectly placed yes, in it. I, agree. I think this is another scenario where you can have a a very romance forward book and still yeah. have a really good story. I like really that there was oral plot. first and then they. I preferred to. when they were just like leading up to it. Yeah, it was. Fun. I think their moments leading up to their scenes were my favorite parts. I don't even remember moments. their fucking sex scene. Fighting a lot. I remember like their oral shit, but I don't remember them actually finally fucking. Did I just black out? Maybe. You might have. Maybe. Probably. I don't know. It was good. Good book. Good call. I'm excited to read the second one. Maybe we'll do the second book. Yeah. Do yeah. we give up on Bridge Kingdom or what? I don't even know what's going on. No, we just haven't picked it up yet. Okay. But we can. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe put it on the list. Them. Yeah, it's on my list. Oh. We have a heavy list to go through. Yeah. Thank you for all the recommendations that you guys keep sending. Really appreciate it. Our list is growing. The podcast is growing. My belly is grow. No, that's not a pregnancy announcement. I'm just eating a lot. Yeah, I was going to say, careful. Um, um, but yeah, excited. imagine if I just said, if I just like was like, by the way, guys. <laughs> I would start. No, I won't. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody, for listening, for watching. If you're not watching, you can watch is us. Is that the end of this pod? I don't know. Do you have more things to say? Oh, no, I guess not. <laughs> Great. Right. So uh, you could watch this podcast on YouTube. Just look up Books and Betches. Follow us on Instagram. That's books underscore N underscore Betches. B-E-T-C-H-E-S. Follow, click the link tree. Follow us on all the other things. It's blank, right? Become a patron. <laughs> fuck you, Maria. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Thank so you. you. Said it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.